Mark chapter 5, very familiar portion of scripture. I don't know how many messages I've preached out of these verses over the years, but I got a fresh thought this week, want to be a help to us. I know we're getting ready to go into a revival meeting. We'll begin our reading verse 21. The Bible says, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. Behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. What faith right there. We're talking about a man who was a ruler of the synagogues, but he'd done seen enough out of Jesus that he knew if Jesus touched her, her daughter would live. And that is the indictment against the church today. The world ought to see enough out of us that Jesus has done in our lives that they'll have confidence that he can do it in their lives. That's not the message. Verse 24, And Jesus went with him. Aren't you glad? Asking you shall receive. He comes seeking Jesus, and Jesus is heading out with him. huh? I promise you, if you come to Jesus today, you'll leave out with him too. Amen? And the Bible says, and, he, and much people followed him and thronged him. Look at verse 25. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment. And for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And immediately, and Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we're thankful, uh, Lord, for the good singing. Our heart was blessed. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Lord, thank you for all the good testimonies. Uh, Lord, again, our heart was blessed hearing you praised and bragged upon. Now, Father, we pray that, Lord, you'd help your people. We certainly pray you'd put a hedge about this place today and God, you've already manifested yourself, but I pray that, Lord, you'd step out from behind the shadows, uh, and God, through the preaching of the Word of God, you'd reveal yourself in a greater, more intimate way than you ever have before. God, we certainly pray if there's any amongst us today who are struggling, they'd find the help they'd need. We pray, Father, for those that, Lord, are seeking answers from God, they'd find the answers they need. God, we certainly pray if there's any amongst us lost without God on their way to hell, that today would be the day of their salvation. We pray for the sweet Holy Ghost of God to speak to hearts, uh, to woo and to draw, and God to do a work. Uh, Lord, if we're honest, we all could be more grateful. We can all love you more. We can all pour more into our desire to serve you. And God, I pray that, Lord, we would truly uh, uh, respond accordingly to the message today. Uh, Father, I pray for Brother Bobby, Lord. Uh, I pray you'd touch him. I pray that, Lord, as uh, Brother Aaron prayed earlier, that you'd give the doctors the wisdom that they need and that uh, all would go well. And, God, I pray for my friend, Brother Bobby. Uh, I pray for Miss Renee, who's sick. You touch her. Miss Judy, who's sick. You touch her. I pray for all my preacher friends that are preaching today. God, you'd use them and anoint them. I pray for revival to break out throughout this land. Uh, and I pray for many souls to come to Christ. Uh, now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. God, get glory now. And, Father, certainly bless your people. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This text has been preached a lot. This chapter has a lot of preaching in it. This chapter, we will find there's a demonic man. A man that has many devils possessing him. But all it took was Jesus showing up, and he delivered them of all the devils. This uh, uh, chapter has a, a desperate father whose daughter's at the point of death. 
And all I had to do was get to Jesus and his daughters made alive. And then we find there's a diseased woman in our text. And can I say something about her? Uh, she was sick for a very long time. Verse 25 tells us 12 years she had an issue of blood. 12 years she's sick. Now, here a few weeks ago, I had a throat thing going on and a sinus thing going on. It lasted about a week. I thought I was going to die. 12 years. That's a long time to deal with something. That's a whole decade of dealing with something, uh, uh, and you're wondering if you're ever going to get relief. We find that not only was she sick a long time, she had suffered greatly. Look in verse 26. And had suffered many things of many physicians. This woman not only was sick, but she was suffering. And she was suffering from many physicians. Now we have two doctors here. We have Dr. Ethan here. We have Dr. Sheila here. The cracker, as Brother Sammy calls her. <clears throat> These doctors that we're blessed with have been to school and learned the latest sciences and learned the latest uh, uh, methods and the latest technologies and the latest remedies to help people. That wasn't the case in, in your Bible days. Uh, they were more like witch doctors. They just tried remedies they'd heard of. Uh, if you had an infection, they'd cut the soles of your feet and drain your blood, hoping that the poison would drain out of you. They'd put leeches on you. They'd uh, put you all through all kinds of uh, very unpleasant things, not knowing if they'd work or not. She had suffered many things. Now, I don't like going to doctors. Other than these two, I don't even like doctors. Huh? I don't. I don't like going to doctors, and they know what they're doing. Can you imagine going to a doctor when they didn't know what they were doing? Hmm? So she's been sick a long time. She's suffered greatly. We know she spent all that she had. Verse 26 said, all that she had. It said she didn't get better, she grew worse. Now, he's here as a visitor, but I'm going to ask him a question. Dr. Ethan, let me ask you a question. Now, if I buy something at Home Depot, and it's not what it's supposed to be, I take it back and they give me my money back. How come I come see you, and I don't get better, I get worse, but you still bill me for it? Huh? Now let's fix that. Can we fix that? You know, that would make the medical profession a whole lot better if they didn't fix you, you got your money back. Guess what? They, they would pay a whole lot more of attention to you when you got there. They wouldn't just spend about 30 seconds and throw some pills at you. They'd listen to what your symptoms were, Brother Clint. They'd listen to what you're going to. They'd look at your history. Uh, they'd spend some time with you because they know they're not going to eat if they don't help you. Huh? See, that would change things, wouldn't it? Let's, let's vote for that. Can we vote for that? Huh? Yeah, all right. Got your vote. All right. It ain't going nowhere, but we can, we can at least make it sound good, huh? You don't even know what I'm talking about, Lucas. Don't even look at me that way, huh? Listen. She got worse. Uh, but I want you to notice something. I'm going to get to the thought. Notice that she was made aware of Jesus. Look at verse 27. And when she had heard of Jesus, she heard about him. That means somebody had been bragging about him. I don't know who it was. Somebody had told her about Jesus. Uh, Maybe in her dealings, uh, uh, she's uh, walking down the street and she's suffering. Uh, and she looks up and there's blind Bartimaeus, but he ain't blind no more. Uh, and she said, Bartimaeus, uh, how come you're not out there begging? She said, he said, I can see, uh, I can see, uh, I can see. Uh, how'd that happen? Uh, hey, I heard that Jesus was coming down the street uh, and I cried out and he called for me uh, and he touched me uh, and I can see. Uh, she said, hallelujah. Uh, maybe she goes on down the road uh, and she sees Zacchaeus uh, and she's saying, Zacchaeus, I'm sorry, I don't have any money to give you this week. Uh, I spent all I had at the doctor's office. Uh, and he said, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I, I, I took advantage of you. Uh, back when I was a tax collector, uh, I think I owe you some money. And he gives her a little money. She said, what happened to you? Uh, he said, I heard about Jesus uh, and I met him uh, and he came to my house uh, 
and he changed my life. Hey, maybe she goes on down the road a little bit, and she sees that man that had a withered hand, and his hands are working fine. She said, what happened to you? He said, I met Jesus, and he said, stretch forth your hand. And when I did, it worked just fine. Hey, all I'm saying, somewhere, somebody along the road told her, if you ever hear that Jesus is around, he can help you. He's not just a physician. He's the great physician. He's the son of God. And he can change your life. She'd heard, she'd been made aware of Jesus. If there's any indictment against the church today, we keep all the greatness that we heard about God in here today. We keep it in here. We need to tell them out there. Uh, there are people out there at the gas pump wondering how they're going to buy groceries. And then when they get money, they go to the grocery store. There ain't groceries to buy. Listen, I don't, I don't know about much, uh, but somebody up there in the government's doing something uh, 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 we don't get our groceries from China. Uh, there's a shortage on groceries because they don't want us to eat. Uh, they're trying to work this thing all out and get it all in order for when the Antichrist shows up. Uh, we ought to be excited. Jesus is coming soon. Uh, but we ought to let everybody know that he's the only way of salvation. Uh, uh, she was made aware. Notice she applied faith. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. She applies faith. Look again in verse 27. It said, when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Notice she didn't say, if I got an audience with him, uh, if I got to sit down and listen to him, uh, if he put his hands on me. No, she said, all I got to do, uh, I've heard how great he is. Uh, he's so much God, all I got to do is get to the hem of his garment. And I'll be whole. What, what faith? Uh, a lot of you today, unless God shows up in a, in a vision at your bank, you don't believe he's going to do anything. She said, I don't even need him. I just need the hem of his garment. Preach one time the hem of the hem. Huh? But anyway, huh? But notice something else about her. She acquired what she wanted. Look at verse 29. And straight, well, straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Isn't that what she wanted? Isn't that why she came to Jesus? that she might be made whole. She got what she wanted. Let me ask you a question this morning. What you, would you come to the house of God wanting? We heard Miss Cindy, she wants to see her, her, her step-grandson saved. We've heard some. Miss Kinsey said she wants to, uh, uh, her, her classmates to see God in her and see there is a reason for living. What did you want from Jesus today? And then let me ask you this question. What does Jesus want to do for you today? I'm going to preach on this thought. I'm going to preach on she got what she wanted, but didn't know what she needed. She got what she wanted, but she didn't know what she needed. See, a lot of times we come asking for God what we want, but we really don't know what we need. Mm hmm. Now this, this is a little simple thing. It'll get down to it here in a minute. I'm going to build this thing up for a minute and show you some things. Uh, but really what is important is what we need, not what we want. Can I say, first of all, notice the consciousness of Christ. Look at verse 30. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press. Can I say nothing's ever occurred to God? Can I say, even before virtue went out of him, he knew she was coming up behind him? Can I say, long before he even got on that road, before the multitude assembled, before he got out of the boat, he knew she was a-coming? You know why? Because he's God. Uh, but hey, he was conscious of the situation. I've got news for you. Nothing caught God by surprise in your life today. Hmm? 
Uh, nothing's ever caught God by surprise. Uh, God knew you'd be here today. It's no accident. Uh, uh, God knew what you needed to hear today. That's no accident. Uh, God's already arranged everything today. Listen, uh, I, I, I didn't know Miss Renee wasn't going to be here, but God did. Uh, and God knew what was going to need to be transpired around here because uh, uh, He's God. Hallelujah. You see, the consciousness of Christ now notice his call. This is very important right here. Look again in verse 30. And said, who touched my clothes? Hmm? He called out, who touched my clothes? Today he's calling out, who needs me? Hmm? Is he calling your voice today, your name today? Do you hear his voice? Hmm? He called. Notice the clueless. Uh, in verse 31, And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and thou sayest, Who touched me? Hmm? That's a bunch of Baptists right there in verse 31. Write that down. Uh, can I say something about his disciples? They were unprepared for the size of the crowd. They got off the boat just thinking it was going to be them hanging out. Now, they've only hung out with Jesus for a little while, but every, they should see every time Jesus stops, a crowd shows up. But they weren't expecting this crowd. Hmm? Can I say some of you came in here today not expecting this crowd? Hmm? You might have been expecting somebody else to be here. I don't know. But they were unprepared for the size of the crowd. Can I say this? They were unaware of others' needs. They didn't know what that woman needed. Jesus did. Uh, you came in here today, and you're no different than them little kids at the, at the toy store wanting everything in there. Not knowing mom and daddy can't provide everything in there. You come in here today wanting everything for God, not realizing that everybody else in here needs something from God. You got tunnel vision. You're only thinking about you. Mm -hmm. But I got news for you. Jesus, think about all of us. Hmm? Hmm? What a God. Brother Phil, he knows what you need. He knows what Miss Kathy needs. He knows all that Miss Lisa needs. And he knows what Brother Mike needs right there on that pew. He knows all that. But you know what, Brother Phil? Your needs are not any more important to him than Miss Kathy's needs or Miss Lisa. They're all vitally important to him. Uh, uh, he said, casting all your cares on him for you care it for you. Uh, hey, he's no respecter of persons. Uh, he loves us the same. He's the same God over all, uh, uh, reached all of us. Uh, 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 he's the same God who cares. Uh, he's the same God uh, who wants to do all things well in your life. He's God. But they were unaware of others' needs. Brother Clint, we don't know everybody else's needs. But he does. If we're not careful, we'll come and we'll be insensitive that other people have needs. You might have had a bad week this week. Somebody might have had a horrible week. You might have had a good week and are insensitive to the fact that somebody is hanging on the last fiber of the last thread of their life. But God knows. They were unprepared for the size of the crowd. They were unaware of others' needs, and they were unnerved by the master's questioning. All they want to do is get through this crowd and find something to eat. Kind of like you all. I want to get through this message and get to Cracker Barrel. They were unnerved that the master said, Who touched you? They said, Hey, look at the size of the crowd, and they're all thronging on you, trying to get to you, and you ask, Who touched me? It's probably Peter. He, he was good at popping off the mouth. Uh, but they were unnerved that he had the audacity to ask, when everybody's touching him, Who touched me? You see, they didn't understand. The others were touching him, but she touched him by faith. Hmm. We see the clueless. Now notice the confronting. Now here's where business is about to pick up. Pay attention. You can come. You can know you need to get to Jesus. You can know what your need is. But if you don't confront Jesus, you won't get what you really need. 
you think you know what you need. She thought she knew what you need. She, she, she needed to be made whole. She had no idea what she really needed. We're getting to it. Notice the confronting in verse 33. But the woman, fearing and trembling... By the way, that's a good way to come to Jesus. Hmm? I got a real problem that people come to Jesus popping bubble gum, acting like Jesus owes them something. Huh? I found that when folks come humbly and broken before Jesus, business picks up in their life. Hmm? Uh, we find that the Bible says again, verse 33, But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him. That's a good place to be. Miss Brittany song sang about it. And you fall at his feet. <laughs> Hallelujah, something's about to happen in your life. huh? We see the confronting. Now notice her confession. Look at verse 33. And told him all the truth. Now, Brother Brian, he knows everything about you. He used to know the number of the hairs on your head. Some of you will get that. Don't have any anymore. Got some on his face. But he knows everything. Everything about you. But there's something about when you tell him what he's revealed to you about you. Hmm? When you tell him the truth, when you come before him and say, I'm nothing. Hmm? Not when you come and say, Lord, you ought to be pleased to have me. Hmm? No, when you come say, I'm nothing, Lord. I'm not worthy. Uh, as Brother Darrell said, I'm not worthy of the goodness of God. Uh, but I just want to come and tell you, uh, Lord, uh, this is what you've done for me. Uh, and I bless you. And I thank you for being good to me. Uh, Lord, I thank you for taking me from that uh, old Monte Carlo uh, and taking me from the shack that I lived in and put me on the top of the hill. Uh, I want to thank you for where you blessed me and how you've let me see you do this and do that. Lord, it's all you, nothing to me. Hey, she told him all the truth. Uh, and when you come uh, and you start telling him how great he is, uh, John said it this way, I must decrease uh, and he must increase. Uh, and the smaller you get uh, and the bigger you make of him, uh, uh, the more he shows up in your life. Uh, I like it when he gets too big for us. Huh? Some of you remember we was in that old building and we was uh, preaching on considering him. He got too big for me that way, Brother Ray. That day, Brother Ray. He got too big for the same. That's the day I went out that side door and was preaching out here in the field. I, he just got too big. I like it when he gets too big. See, she confessed what had happened in her life. And by the way, I wouldn't give you a flip for somebody that says they got saved and they don't want to tell anybody about it. Everybody in the Bible got saved. They couldn't wait to tell somebody about it. Huh? That's one of the first evidence he got saved. Uh, 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 you go out and tell everybody else what Jesus done for you. Uh, I'm glad uh, when he does something in your life, it can't be hid. Hallelujah. Huh? Then notice the conferring or what he did for her, what he grants to her. Uh, look at verse 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. In verse 34, she gets what she needs. See, she'd already got what she wanted. Now she's about ready to get what she needs. What what she need, preacher? Well, notice some things. Notice, first of all, she, she needed adoption. Huh? Look what he says. He don't call her woman. Huh? It's all we see her as is woman, 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 till Jesus speaks to her. Verse 34, he said unto her daughter, hmm? Aren't you glad you've been made part of the family of God? Aren't you glad you've been made joint heirs to the throne of Christ? Uh, aren't you glad to be uh, a son or daughter of God? What a blessing. Uh, he didn't call her woman. Uh, he didn't call her by name. Uh, he made it even more uh, intimate than that. Uh, he shows she's been adopted into the family of God. Uh, she was born a Jew, uh, but now she's a child of the king. Uh, what a blessing. She's been uh, adopted. She's the daughter of him. Uh, what a blessing. We see what you really need was to be adopted into the family. See, she doesn't have a husband. He's, he's done off the scene. Probably passed away. The doctors couldn't help him either. But now she's the daughter of Jesus. 
Notice what else she needs. She needs assurance. Look what he says. Go in peace. She came for healing. She left with peace. Mm. There's a lot of folks come and trust Jesus as Savior and get born again. Then they get the peace of God in their soul. Uh, what they think they need uh, is to be able uh, uh, to not know, die and go to hell. And you do need that. Uh, and what a blessing when you get saved. You get the assurance you're not going to hell. Uh, but there's something about peace that passes all understanding. Uh, where you can lay your head down on your pillow at night. Uh, it don't no matter what Putin does or Biden does or anybody does. Uh, uh, your life belongs to the Lord and he's in control. Uh, peace and it's going to be all right. Uh, hey, uh, when the money's getting low and the bills are gathering up uh, it's okay to have peace and know uh, hey he's not forsaking you yet uh, and he'll not forsake you now uh, hey she needed peace and that's what she got can you imagine for 12 years not having peace she's sick and she's hemorrhaging every day for 12 years can you imagine how anemic she is can you imagine uh, uh, how much iron she needs, Miss Lynn? For 12 years, she's hemorrhaged. Mm, can you imagine all the suffering of all the quacky things? Have you ever been up late at night? I stay up half the night and watch all the infomercials and all the stuff that they want to sell you. It's going to change your life. I mean, they got something for everything. The Stone Mountain Pots. The greatest pots and pans pans 12 bucks if it's so great why is it 12 bucks because I went to Macy's and their pans there are about 500 bucks so how's this one 12 bucks better than them huh I, I, and you got the thing where you, you, you push it in and you can cut the brownies before they're baked huh what a blessing the only problem is you can't get it out after you bake the brownies it's stuck in there it's part of your brownie huh I mean, they got all, the, all the, the, the egg peelers and all this stuff. It's always, you know, $19.95 plus shipping to hand. But wait! Order now, you get two for the price of one. No, that means it's only worth about 4 bucks, and you're paying 20 bucks for two of them. I mean, you know, so, oh, I bought something and it worked. Yeah, about three times. Huh? What you see? all this stuff looks good it all sounds good they know how to sell it can I say that's all she got was infomercial doctrine oh this thing will help you this thing will help you this modern thing will help you this will do the trick this will do but she never got better she got worse and then she spent all she had every last cent She even went to the widow, gave the two mites, and tried to borrow money off her, and she didn't have any. I mean, she has nothing. And she thought what she needed was healing. What she needed was peace. Because for those 12 years, her life was in constant torment. And yeah, the healing made her life better, but peace made her life meaningful. And can I say this? She got what she needed. She was made anew. Look what he said. Look what he said. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. He said, your faith has made thee whole. Now go in peace. Go in peace because you've been made whole of thy plague. You've got to understand what that word whole means. It means unharmed. It means after she met with Jesus, it was like she had never ever been sick. I don't know about you, but y'all know I had neck surgery back in September. The neck wasn't a problem. It was because they took the bones out of the hip. Hip still hurts, and I got a scar on my hip. But when he touched her, Brother Brian, is this she'd never, ever been sick. There wasn't no scars. Hmm? Huh? Can I say the mental anguish was gone because of the peace? Huh? Listen, it means undamaged. I don't know about you, 12 years, my body's shown some damage just living life. Not after she got to Jesus. She didn't need that miracle retinol cream that makes all your wrinkles go. She was undamaged. Hmm. Can I say this? 
It means unscathed. Uh, what I'm saying is, she was made anew. You remember when Naaman the leper listened to the little maid and he went and saw the man of God. The man of God told him to go dip in the river Jordan seven times and he didn't want to go. And his little servant said, hey, if he asked a big thing, wouldn't you have done this? Why not do this little thing? So can I say he went down, he dipped one time, nothing, two times, nothing, three times, nothing, and the Baptist would quit right there. Four times, nothing, because we don't pay attention to what, what he said. It, seven times. Went down six times. When he come up that seventh time, the Bible says that his flesh became as a newborn babe. It don't get any more fresh than that. No calluses, no wrinkles, soft. Uh, can I say when God makes you new, he makes you new. He said, be thou whole of thy plague. I said, all that say this. She thought she needed healing. What she needed was peace. Hmm. She got what she wanted, didn't know what she needed. I wonder this morning, are you willing to get what you need today? That comes by coming to Jesus and letting him tell you what he wants to do for you. Will you let him do something for you today? Say, preacher, I'm saved. Hallelujah, what a blessing. What do you need? Well, I want this. I didn't ask you that. What do you need? See, you won't know what you need till he tells you. She didn't know she needed peace till he told her. She didn't know she needed adoption till he called her daughter. She didn't know that she needed more than just uh, 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 the blood to be dried up. She needed to be made whole. Can I say he knows what you need today? And when you run out of excuses and you run out of your thought process and you're willing to come to him and let him deal with you, you'll get what you need. Are you willing to come get what you need today? You might be here and you might think you're saved. He might tell you. He might be telling you right now, you need to be born again. Well, I wouldn't listen to what you're thinking. I'd listen to what he says. Because I promise you, the devil's not going to tell you you need to get born again. Hmm? So if you're here today and you're lost, why don't you come get born again? If he tells you you need to go to somebody and tell them you're sorry, go to them and tell them you're sorry. If he tells you you need to go put your arms around somebody and tell them you love them, you need to do that. If he tells you you need peace, uh, and get in the altar and stay there till he gives you peace, uh, hey, whatever he saith unto you, that's what you need to do today. Might start by you coming and confronting him and confessing to him and then let him show you what you need and confer it to you. Will you come? And see what Jesus has for you. Let's all stand, Miss Tina, if you'll come. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Why they're coming. Folks are coming to the altar. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you for your good grace. Lord, I'm guilty so many times come to the house of God thinking I know what I want. Lord, I don't know what I need. I'm glad for the sweet Holy Ghost and Word of God that reveals our needs. My Lord, you know the need of every heart here today. There might be somebody here that's been struggling with something for a long time. What they need is come and give it to Jesus. Maybe somebody here today, Lord, that's a church member, but you revealing to them they're lost. I pray they come get born again. Might be somebody here today that's got an aunt with a brother and need to go get that settled. Might be somebody here today that needs to show some gratitude. Go tell somebody they love them and they're thankful for them. Lord, whatever the need is today, I pray you'd reveal it. I pray your people would come, seek your face for it. I pray we'd see something tremendous happen in the lives of your people even this very hour. Bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.